Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. This is a new series of videos on making an Iron Man motorised faceplate. I made one in the past which had a couple of videos in my channel, which is the one on the, on the right here. Um, but I'm hopefully going to make a more refined version, which actually fits on my head properly. So since having made the first helmet, I've acquired a 3D printer. And I've also built this Android, which um, is all 3D printed. So if you haven't seen those videos, check out the Android 12 playlist. Um, basically, a lot of the work I've done on 3D printing and making the mechanics for the Android project are going to get used in the Iron Man suit. So I guess that's a bit like Tony Stark, you know, he's built these suits and they're also robots. But it's also a bit like Honda building Asimo the robot and then using the R&D from that project in their other products. So the original helmet was pretty crude. Um, I made most of the pieces um, by hand. There's basically, it's two servos, one at the top and one at the bottom, and an aluminium link. So both of these can change angle independently. And they were just driven by a servo controller. There's a lot of hot glue in there. Um, and all these pieces were made out of hand, uh, by hand out of an aluminium piece that was cut down with a hacksaw, holes drilled in it. There's some plastic blocks there to make up the um, make up the distance to get this double hinged mechanism. Um, it worked okay. There isn't really space for this servo on top of your head though, which means the helmet sits too high. And also this helmet's polyurethane, which means I've had some issues with it warping um, at the back where it's been sat down and essentially changing shape. So, um, the new helmet that I've got here is a cast from the same mould. This one is fibreglass, which is extremely rigid and won't go out of shape. And the plan is to do a similar mechanism, but with only one servo. And the way I'm going to do that is by using the slots, which are a feature of the top of the helmet, to guide a couple more links, so that that can um, guide the back of the faceplate, and I only need one servo to drive the front of it, and the whole of the faceplate will stay in line. So I've bent this piece of wire, which should fit perfectly in these slots, so it can be fixed to the faceplate at the front, and then um, it can lean all the way back, and that should guide the back end of the faceplate. So I need to mount that on some sort of hinge, so I'm gonna make a 3D printed block that uh, will hold this on the top of the helmet. This is just a piece of wire coat hanger wire, and obviously you could make the block out of a piece of wood, or just drill a hole in a piece of plastic. So that piece is printed in the 3D printer. Obviously, as I say, you could make this out of any material, um, or you could make it out of two smaller blocks with two holes in to hold this thing. So I've got two halves uh, with a ridge down the middle, so they sandwich together just for ease of getting the wire thing in. Now I've already bent it, so there's a hole in each end, so that should sandwich in there quite nicely. And I've got some screw holes to screw those together. And I've also made it nicely curved. So it should fit into the top of the helmet. So let's get that together and glue it in and get these aligned with the slots. I've used a hot glue gun to glue that block in there. So these things hinge through the gaps, which seems to work quite well. Obviously there is a bit of a block in there on the top of the hat, uh, the helmet, but um, having tried it on my head, um, it actually brings the helmet to exactly the right height, so obviously there'll be some foam padding around the edge anyway, and a couple of foam blocks in the top, but it sits quite nicely on my head with that block in there. Probably could have made the bottom slightly curved, but anyway, um, that seems fine. So now I just need to print some additional hinges to attach to the back of the faceplate here, so it comes back in that sort of motion. And then the front hinges. So these are the next two parts, which are another two hinges, which glue onto the inside of the faceplate. So what I need to do to get those aligned is tape this in place with a bit of masking tape, turn it upside down with it held in place in the correct place when it's closed, um, and then glue those two down.
So that's all glued in, and even for a manually operated helmet, that's quite a good motion. So now having drawn dots all over the side of this helmet, I've now come up with the ideal hinge position, I think, which is here and here, which is roughly 70 mil. And it means if there's a lever there and the faceplate does this, then it should just clear the two corners. It should end up somewhere there. So the next 3D printed part is also going to be very simple. It's just going to be um, something you can cut out of sheet material. It's just going to be a straight lever and it's going to have um, another angled lever on, which is going to be the mechanism activated by the servo. So here's my CAD drawing for the piece. Um, I mentioned this is quite simple and you could cut it out sheet material. Obviously this is the main hinge piece um, which goes between the face plate and the rest of the helmet and then there's um, a point there for the servo to pull on. Um, you could just cut that out sheet material and just make a hinge but generally that involves putting um, a nut and a bolt or a screw or something like that through the helmet to make the hinge point. So what I've done here, because I can 3D print them, is made these hubs. So these two pieces stick onto the faceplate and the rest of the helmet. There's a nice um, flat place there to glue them on with. And then they've got these tapered plugs that fit into the tapered socket. So this piece goes upside down essentially onto the hub. And then these washer pieces screw through onto these pieces. Um, so that basically this gets sandwiched in between the taper and the flat washer piece which has a screw holding it. So hopefully that means I can mount the thing all on the inside, I can glue it to the helmet without having to make any holes in it, and the total width of this is just 5mm thick. <laughs> I've installed the hinge now, so we can see how that operates from the inside as the helmet lifts up. It does scrape slightly on the side of the helmet, just on this corner, just the um, just that red bar scrapes slightly on there. I've sanded some of this away to make it as thin as possible. There's a slight sound as it passes. Um, the corners of these parts do miss each other though, as intended, so... Now we've got quite a good action for the entire thing. So, there's a lever on the back of this that we can see, which is where the servo is going to pull it. So I just need to test for torque on that. So I'm just going to stick this into the hole on the end. And basically, try pulling it at different angles. So, about there, I've drawn two little marks at each end of where this shorter lever part moves to and uh, basically there's about 50mm of travel we need there. It doesn't feel like it's too hard to pull up, even with the helmet this way up. So I'm pretty sure I can use one of the servos I've got, which is a 15 kilogram per centimetre torque servo, so basically <clears throat> at one centimetre from the centre point the stall torque is 15 kilograms so it could effectively almost lift a 15 kilogram weight and then at two centimetres it would be at um, seven and a half and so on. So I think what's going to happen is I'm going to put a pulley on this servo to pull a wire to pull that. Um, to get 15 mil of travel I need to have, um, well, so this only rotates 180 degrees, so I need a circumference of 100 mil. So in a 180 degree turn, um, it will pull a, a cable 50 mil. So with 100 mil of circumference divided by pi, roughly I need um, a pulley diameter of 30, 30 millimeters, in fact, which is a radius of 15 millimeters, which is a centimeter and a half, so I should get about 10 kilograms of pull. So um, I just need to find a place to position this servo and find a way of running the wire there, which I think is going to run down a tube, otherwise known as a Bowden cable. And I think I'm going to fit this servo into the chin upside down, just in there. 
So I just need to play around with some tubing and some cords and then I should have a plan. So I've printed the next part here which is a very strange looking bracket and also a pulley which is mounted onto the servo. Um, and that pulley pulls a wire which is also red um, which you can just see goes around the pulley um, it's got a notch and a hole that comes out of the middle so we can tie the string off. This is actually just a piece of electrical wire, very thin uh, light duty hookup wire. Um, there's a hole there that it feeds through and obviously as this um, turns it uh, winds up a piece and that distance happens to be exactly about 55 millimeters, which is the travel that we need. So. Um, the hole on this side you'll notice is larger and that's to take a tube and I've got this piece with a small hole in one end and a big hole in the other end which takes the other end of the tube so uh, this wire can be led on a path all the way from the chin of the helmet up to the lever so this piece sticks in just there and I just need to wait for the tube to arrive so I can install the tube and both ends and then we should be away so I've now got hold of my tube, which is a PTFE tube, otherwise known as Teflon, which has a 6mm outer diameter and a 4mm inside diameter. Um, and that's attached between basically the pulley assembly and the block. And then this yellow string runs all the way. And that's um, actually shark fishing line, which is um, 65 pounds of force it can hold. And it's actually doubled up, so... Um, the loop is round the, the hole in the lever and then the other end is tied off on the pulley. So basically, as you'd expect as the pulley turns, it winches open the faceplate. I've also installed this small spring, which is a soft stop at the top and it also stops the faceplate overbalancing too far and getting stuck. So basically all that brings this back is gravity as the winch unwinds. So I'm going to put that on a servo controller and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so I've just wired that into a servo controller that's linked to my laptop. Next time I'll be covering how to actually fit electronics and program the servo, so look out for part two.